Okay, great. Well, hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, and welcome to uh, Harmony or Fragmentation, Strategies for Compliance Success in the EU. Over the next 30 minutes, we're going to talk through the macro regulatory landscape, expected regulatory developments, and how to approach identity verification to stay ahead of changing regulations. So by way of introduction, I'm Alid lloyd Owen, Global Policy Director here at Onfido. And I'm Thomas Galvin, Compliant Product Expert at Onfido. So today we're going to look at greater efforts for harmonization across the EU, as well as ask a question, which is for as long as member states have a significant independent role in domestically implementing EU regulation, is harmonization an unrealizable dream? And in answer to that, Tamar is going to be offering insights on what IDV solutions can help you stay compliant and secure within a fragmented regulatory landscape. So how do we see the world? Well, <clears throat> as you'll know, there are three key components which make up the EU regulatory landscape. First off, we have regulations, the legal skeleton and framework, such as EIDAS, EIDAS II, the AML directive and regulations, and the EBA guidelines, a mix of enabling, prohibitive, binding and non-binding rules, regulations and guidelines which apply across all EU member states. And these are the principal driving force toward regulatory harmonization across Europe. Alongside them are the technical standards, which put technological meat on the bones of those broadly technology agnostic regulations. Legislating, particularly at the EU level, takes a very long time to come together. EIDAS II, for example, has been four years in the making and has at least another two to go before it's entered into force. And so in order to be effective, that legislation is written to be technology agnostic and ad adaptable to emerging solutions. Standards, though, are more easily adapted to technological change over time, and they can facilitate harmonized and interoperable solutions, which can be developed to provide a common framework for technical compliance. And that's so far so good, right? So we've got a uniform regime in place and we're on the way to harmonization. But because of the way the EU is constituted, member states will clothe these harmonized EU regulations and standards in their own domestic legislative regimes. And that leads to significant divergence. So the purpose of today's webinar is to set out that landscape as it's currently constituted and to give you insight into the future direction of travel and to set out the ways in which Onfido we're adapting our products to help customers meet their compliance obligations at both the EU and member state level. So first, let's look at the regulatory landscape today. We begin with the IDAS 1 and 2, the Electronic Identification and Trust Services Regulation and their amending successor. The IDAS 1 dates back to 2014, and it established a pan-European framework for digital identity underpinned by nine principles user choice, privacy, interoperability and security, trust, convenience, user consent, control proportionality, counterpart knowledge and global scalability. It covers the pan-European framework for trust services to create, validate and verify electronic signatures, timestamps, seals and certificates. And it established the regulation by which a trust service may provide authentication and preservation of created electronic signatures, certificates and seals. Now, trust services in the EU must comply with the IDAS as an EU registered entity under the supervision of a relevant supervisory body of an EU member state. For those who are also operating in the UK context, the regulation has been adopted into UK law post EU exit and is overseen by the Information Commissioner's Office, the ICO. But there is no reciprocity agreement in place, which means that businesses operating in both the UK and EU jurisdictions must have separate entities submitting to supervision by a designated regulator in order to be EIDAS compliant. Last year, EIDAS 2 was finalised, and that updates EIDAS by embracing new types of electronic trust services, such as electronic seals and certificates, for the authentication of electronic documents. It also defines qualified trust service providers, QTSPs, responsible for ensuring that digital identities align with the updated regulation, and includes compliance with the EIDAS high level security standards and obligations verified by national supervisory bodies. Crucially, it also established harmonized requirements for a universally available and universally recognized EU digital identity wallet, the UDI. 
All private services operating in the EU, which are legally required to authenticate their users, are required to recognize and accept credentials presented by the EU DI. So the ambition is to enable every European to have a set of digital identity credentials, such as ID cards, passports, professional certifications and driving licenses, recognized across the EU. Mobile applications or cloud services that provide reusable digital credentials can be utilized privately and securely for a variety of use cases as part of that EUDI. Each member state is required by EIDAS2 to produce through either public or private sector delivery, both an EUDI wallet for its citizens and the necessary infrastructure to recognize credentials from other member states. Enabling legislation and a 30-month implementation period will have us looking at entry into force in mid-2026 at the very earliest. ETSI, the European Telecommunications Standards Institute, produced specific technical standards to facilitate the implementation of EIDAS-1 and will certainly be doing the same for EIDAS-2. And that will provide consistent technical requirements and ensure interoperability between standards. Standards are an essential part of giving practical application to these EIDAS regulations. Now, next up, we have the Anti-Money Laundering Directive, which is in fact a series of directives and regulations. And these establish a number of customer due diligence and KYC requirements to prevent money laundering and counter-terrorist financing, AML and CTF. And that includes measures to establish ultimate beneficial ownership, politically exposed persons, and to mitigate against risks from third countries deemed by the European Union to have inadequate AML or CTF regimes in place. Unlike a regulation, a directive is not directly binding on an EU member state, but rather it obliges them to transpose the directive into domestic legislation. And therefore, we have the European Banking Authority, EBA, guidelines for remote customer onboarding to ensure common standards between domestically implemented regimes. Now, the guidelines include internal policies and procedures which financial institutions should maintain for remote customer onboarding processes in order to ensure that the correct information is gathered, that human and automated processes are clearly distinguished, and protections to ensure that customer due diligence measures have been completed before any transaction with a newly onboarded customer is executed. It also places requirements on regulated entities to ensure monitoring of the remote onboarding solution and that ongoing governance is in place to ensure that the overarching structure of the policies are implemented effectively and reviewed regularly to ensure ongoing CTF AML compliance. Now, it also sets out expectations for document authenticity and integrity, matching customer identity and the acquisition of information required to facilitate identity verification procedures. And where a third party provider supports customer onboarding, the guidelines provide a framework for the regulated entity to be an intelligent customer of that provider in order to select and integrate a solution which delivers both regulatory compliance and ensures reliable, secure data flows with the contracting regulated entity. And so we come to the illusion of harmonization. So the goal of the Commission across these regulations, directives and guidance is harmonisation. And on paper, it seems like it'll do the trick. But ultimately, because each of these allows member states a significant degree of national autonomy in implementation, that landscape builds on the existing fragmented ID verification framework and sector specific regulation across EU member states. EIDAS, for example, does not mandate a single exclusive interoperable standard, and in fact it allows for three routes to compliance. Using an electronic identity or EID, and EIDAS 2 will mandate that member states accept EIDs, though it's not expected that they'll become widespread for a number of years. Two, by requesting an EIDAS qualified electronic signature, which is accepted across all member states as having the same weight as a handwritten signature or three, via nationally accredited schemes, for example, PVID in France, which we'll refer to later. And these schemes are unique to each member state and so create additional complexity for businesses operating across borders. So in the short to medium term, this is likely to cause further divergence in member state verification requirements and a more fractured landscape, the opposite of the regulation's intended purpose. This makes standards even more critically important in this environment, 
because the amended regulation, for example, with the IDAS is technology agnostic and ETSI standards will be paramount for ensuring harmonized and interoperable solutions. So the technical standards to which the present regulation relates are existing ETSI standards and ETSI will coordinate the development of further complementary standards to put the technical flesh on those legislative and regulatory bones. And that will provide at least a technical level of conformity and interoperability between otherwise fractured domestic regimes. So today we have a crowded system from EID, video and QES, as well as traditional face-to-face -face verification as part of the broader ecosystem for ID verification. And the long-term goal of EIDAS too is to push the overwhelming majority of EU customers into using EU digital identity via the wallet and regulated entities to accept the UD EU DI. Now, in theory, this should simplify the landscape by pushing towards more electronic measures that are interoperable uh, in order to confirm customer identities. But if we use the analogy of payment methods, we can see that the long term change to products is actually a slow process in spite of obvious incentives like convenience and security. So since about 3000 BCE, coins and cash have been king right up until the 1950s with the introduction of credit and debit cards. And while those offered greater convenience and later EMV like chip and pin and contactless payment methods have added considerably greater security and convenience to customers through to the introduction of ubiquitous biometric secured mobile telephone payments, analog methods have continued to persist, even though there are solutions which offer a much deeper, easier customer experience and level of security. So the pace of uptake is also slow and legacy methods persist. In 2022, for example, cash still accounted for 59% of point of sale transactions in the Eurozone and broken down nationally, that included 77% in Malta, 63% in Germany, but only 19 and 21% in Finland and the Netherlands respectively. So the pace of change is also heavily affected by national cultures and habits and regulatory environments. And that is the same in the, e, in the ID verification space. We can see a proliferation of the existing methods of verification persisting alongside initiatives like the EUDI and we can also see with the EUDI the piecemeal, piecemeal use of its component elements as well, such as enhanced biometrics and reusable cloud-based identities across different regulatory environments, providers, consumers, and all at different paces in different jurisdictions. So if there is only one takeaway from this webinar, it's this, that the EU operating and regulatory environment is becoming more complicated and more complex despite more regulation for harmonization. Fragmented KYC requirements cannot cut corners on experience and need global providers capable of adapting to a complex landscape to ensure compliance while minimizing friction for genuine customers and preventing unnecessary loss of revenue. And we have in the resources uh, for this webinar further information about the KYC requirements. And on this, I will hand over to Tamar, who will explain to you what you should look for in a compliance suite to navigate this complex landscape. Thanks, Alan. Um, so we saw that even if EU is working to harmonize regulation across member states, fragmentation will not disappear. And the deployment of new identification means and the evolution of technologies to prevent fraud will complexify the field of remote customer onboarding. You will still have to navigate across multiple local regulation. And in addition, you will have also to support multiple options to provide the best user experience to your customer. So what should you look for when selecting an onboarding compliance suite? Product certification. Risk and cost of non-compliance are too high to implement a solution that doesn't meet the regulation. Quality of service. By using a compliance solution that provides a bad user experience or that is only usable by a limited number of your customer, you will lose a significant part of your business. And flexibility. Regulation and technology are moving fast. And you know that to preserve a competitive advantage, you need to be able to go to market more and more quickly. So let's dig into each of these items. Standard are critical. 
to help you to select the right solution. But what are the standards and certification you should pay attention for? At first, identity proof in standard. This standard appeared very recently, and it's a very good thing for the IGV market. It allows you to distinguish between high versus low quality solutions. These standards are binded with regulation. So it's important to identify the standards that fit with your region where you want to comply. I will present three of them. HC standard. The most important one is the technical standard 119461 for remote identity proofing. Then in the US, for example, you have a standard from NIST that is EIL2. And in the UK, you can consider the UK transfer mark. Another type of certification is about the robustness of specific part of the solution. The certification gives a proof point that the solution has been evaluated to prevent specific type of fraud attacks. IBETA level two, for example, is definitively something to consider when you are looking for a biometric solution and preventing deepfakes. The last certification are classical ones for IT solution and especially SaaS solution. ISO 27001, SOC 2 Tip 2, and GDPR compliance should be a minimum to get insurance that the solution is secured and data protected. Quality of service is really important. It often makes this, it, it often, it is often what makes the difference between two solutions. At first, the solution needs to provide a global coverage to support all your customers. Check what are document type and issuing countries that are supported and request proof points of the level of, person, of performance. Capture experience. File upload is the main source of fraud. It means that the user needs to take a live photo or video of the ID document, and it is not that simple. A good compliance suite should provide an optimized capture component you can easily integrate in your website or in your mobile application. This is what we call an SD key. SD key should support real-time user feedback and instant, instant image quality verification. Then, overall turnaround time and approval rates. Automatic processing based on artificial intelligence is great, but providers have to define the right threshold. If the system is restrictive, you will catch fraudster, but also legitimate persons. If it's too laxist, it will let pass many fraudster. That's why hybrid solution provides the best approach. But only if your provider has enough trained analysts to guarantee a quick and consistent turnaround time. Flexibility of the solution will allow you to easily update your onboarding journey. What does it mean? Updating a customer journey often requires to set up an IT project and to involve a developer team. Planning such project takes time and is costly. A no-code based solution will allow you to save time and money. With a no-code builder interface, your business teams will be autonomous to update existing flow and to create new ones. Your flow has to be flexible. They need to support variation. For example, some onboarding journey could require additional steps depending on the user nationality or a different set of verification for specific products and services. A solution that integrates workflow and rules engine will allow you to manage this complexity in a single place and to dynamically adapt user step as back office processes. I give you some criteria to evaluate a compliance suite, but I want now to introduce a specific feature. I will explain why QES, Qualified Electronic Signature, is an option to consider if you are operating in France, but also more globally in EU. Let's review the French financial regulation for remote customer onboarding. So a latent law in France is the CMF, Code Monetary Financier. What does it say? The first article allows to onboard customer by using an EID with a substantial level of assurance. 
The problem is that this type of identification mean has not yet been broadly deployed. So we have to refer to another article to find the solution. The second article allows financial institutions to implement two per six of the following measures. The first measure is to get a copy of the document. The second measure is to certify the copy of the document. But certifying a copy can only be done by an accredited person, a public officer like a notary. You can easily understand that this measure is not applicable in a digital world. The third measure is to request a first transaction, a penny drop. This transaction has to be processed from or to an account owned by the user and located in EU. This solution presents a poor user experience. Due to the way SEPA transfers are working, it could take days to be completed. Also, customers without EU bank account are excluded. Please note that this principle here is to rely on the previously done KYC. French regulator is now considering to remove this possibility. The first measure is to ask another bank to confirm the identity. This measure requests a direct connection with the bank. It is not allowed to use an intermediary like an open banking solution. To make it work, you would have to be connected with all banks in EU. It is not applicable. The fifth measure is to use a French accredited IDB solution. France has published a specific standard, PVID, Prestataire de Vérification d'Identité à Distance. This is a set of very strict requirements that has been created by ANSI. This type of solution is expensive and the quality of the service complex to maintain. And it also requires to capture an high definition video. It means that customers with old smartphones are excluded. Finally, the sixth measure refers to EDAS trust services and especially to qualified electronic signature as a valid solution to onboard your customers. After analyzing these six measures, a combination of measure one and six looks like the best candidate to meet the French regulation. But qualified electronic signature is not only a valid solution for France, it's also applicable widely across Europe. I will give you more detail by analyzing the last guidelines on remote customer onboarding published by EBA, the European Banking Authority. EBA guidelines for remote customer onboarding define several requirements. Some of them have to be addressed by the financial institution, but for others, they will be addressed by the IDV solution you will implement. We can consider several IDV package with different level of courage. The first one is a classical standard IDV with a doc and facial similarity comparison. This solution will cover requirements around document verification and customer matching with biometrics. By using an SD key, the capture component, it will also help to secure client device usage. The second option is an Etsy certified IDV package. It will provide the same level of coverage as the classical IDV, and as it includes an handset traceability with an audit trade generation, it also covers additional requirements around acquisition of information. Finally, the qualified electronic signature based solution. EBA guidelines are clearly promoting QAS, and specific requirements are considered as met by default with this solution. It simplifies the pre-implementation assessment and testing of the solution. A part of the acquisition of information requirements are trusted by default. No need to double check data extraction accuracy or capture media quality. And customer matching is also considered as reliable. QAS-based solution will strongly simplify your work to demonstrate your TB guidelines. But what does it look like in real life? I'm now pleased to present our Onfido Qualified Electronic Signature Use of Flow. Please note that you can find in the resources the video I will demonstrate to you.
user flow starts with a document video capture of the front and the back of the document. Our solution provides real-time feedback to the user and instant image quality verification. Then we capture the, file, the face to bind the user with the document and to detect liveness. Finally, user has to explicitly accept the insurance of the qualified certificate that will be used to sign the document. And when it's done, he can access the document to sign. This document is provided by our customer. It could be general terms and condition or any subscription contract. And finally, user will complete an OTP process to secure the process. As you can see, the user flow is very smooth. What are key advantages on Onfilo QS solution? At first, it is an all-in-one compliance solution that satisfies ACPR requirements in France. Then, it's a fast and automated approval solution. Instead of, instead of splitting the flow on two separate moments, IDV and then signature, that breaks the user flow and creates high drop off, we succeed to build an all in one journey in a single flow for the user and manage all the processing in the background. This allows our customer to reduce their drop off rates and increase their approval rates. Finally, Onfido is integrated into Onfido Studio platform. It means that you can create your flow in a no code builder interface. Studio Workflow Engine will control steps on the user device, but also on the backend processing. And this is available on web and native Android and iOS. What are the key takeaway? You should look at certification, quality of service, and flexibility of the compliance suite solution. You can consider qualified electronic signature as the best option to meet the French financial regulation as for meeting EU EBA guidelines. And addressing compliance challenges is complex. You can benefit from your IDV partner expertise. So don't hesitate to ask Confido to set up a dedicated workshop with your compliance expert. Thank you for taking some time with us today. We hope that you found today's briefing helpful in your quest to better understand the EU regulatory landscape. May we suggest some informative resources? You will find it on the resource button from this webinar, such as the EU KYC white paper and on FIDO QES demo. This asset can also be found on our website, onfido.com, 